but most of the former slaves entered the Reconstruction era with unparalleled hope. They were eager to build new lives in the South. Did you think that you would live your whole life in Tennessee? Oh, no. I knew I wanted to go somewhere because I didn't like the cotton fields. One of the first songs that you wrote, I believe, was entitled Nutbush City Limits. That's true. Could you sing it for me? Church house, gym house, dun 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 school house, old house, highway number 19, dun 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 dun, people keep the city clean, and then they call it that bush. Music legend Tina Turner grew up in Tennessee, where her great-great-grandfather Logan Curry had been enslaved. Like most former slaves with no financial resources, Logan had little choice but to remain on the plantation after he was free. Yet he wanted to make one thing perfectly clear. He was now the master of his own fate. This document is dated January 6, 1866, and it's a labor contract. Now, we've searched post-Civil War labor contracts up and down, looking for as many as we could for every guest in our series. And this is the only one that we've ever found. The only one. The said Jesse Carey, on his part, promises to furnish the above-named freedmen land to cultivate the farming tools, mm -hmm. the horses, the mules. Mm -hmm. And we, the above-named freedmen, mm -hmm. on our part, promises to cultivate sufficient grain for the use of the family and stock the balance in cotton. Right. Oh, I hated the cotton field because mm -hmm. there were those hairy worms crawling, there were the spiders, and, and also the picking of the cotton. I couldn't quite get as much in my sack as everybody else. Mm -hmm. and everyone was picking and pushing it down and their sacks were really full and I really wanted that. How old were you when you started? Oh, you know, I don't really remember, but what you do remember is the, oh. the cones, the, your hands in the cuticles, yeah. and, and the sun. The sun was so hot. Hmm. Well, well, Tina, this document lays out the terms by which your great-great-grandfather Logan and his family would barter their labor with the white man named Jesse Curry, the same man who had owned them before the Civil War ended. Yes. So they didn't leave, they stayed, but they struck up a deal with them. Yes. An arrangement, as you know, that came to be called sharecropping. Yes. The relationship between Logan Curry and his former master changed dramatically. Instead of owner and property, they were now employer and employee, an important step towards genuine equality. We searched the records to see what else we could find out about Logan Curry. I solemnized mm -hmm. the right of matrimony between the within named parties on the 27th day of December, 1870. And look who signed it. Logan Curry, M.G. Minister of the Gospel. Aha. Uh -huh. It seems that your great-great-grandfather Logan had become a minister. Between the year 1870, five years after slavery ended, and 1888, Logan Curry married more than 50 black couples. As soon as slavery ended, one of the first thing black people did yes. was they sought out a minister and a, the courthouse yes. to legalize their relationships, which hadn't been legal under slavery. And your great-great-grandfather Logan was one of the people sanctioning the uh, institution of marriage. This is great information. Really great. Marriage was not only an act of love and commitment, it was also an opportunity for the former slaves to exercise their new rights as citizens. The church reminded us that we were children of God. That was very, very important. We've never forgotten that. When Jim Crow America shut our ancestors out, they didn't just give up. They created their own institutions, often at great personal sacrifice, building the foundation for change. This is a land deed from Benjamin B. Flagg, your great-grandfather George Flagg's older brother. I, mm -hmm. Benjamin B. Flagg of, yes, B. B. Flagg, mm -hmm. of Haywood County, Tennessee, mm -hmm. for the sum of $25 cash, have sold to the trustee of Flagg 
That's right. Flags. Flag Grove Schoolhouse? Mm-hmm. One acre of land. One acre of land. Flag Grove was my... No. The going rate for land in Tennessee at this time was approximately $75 or $80 an acre. So Benjamin Flagg sold his land below market value so that our people could have a school. He made it possible to create Flagg's Grove School. I went to Flagg Grove School, elementary school. <sighs> great. <laughs> Just great. Wow. By the time the century drew to a close, the United States government had turned its back on our people all over the South. You are 33% European. Really? I'm 50-50 to my heart. Yeah. The chairman of African American studies at Harvard at the time is a half a white man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're kidding. There's a lot of sneaking and creeping back there on the plantation. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, my go goodness. On to Tina Turner. Uh, her family reports uh, indigenous American ancestry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tina grew up believing that two of her grandparents were part Native American. But you're only 1% Native American. You know how your family has always thought that you had all this Native American yes, heritage? Yes, yes, yes. It was white heritage that oh, you sure. had. All this time I've been thinking Indian. I was dying to find out what tribe it was. You're from the tribe of <laughs> Europe. <laughs> <laughs> your results wow. are all over the map. We couldn't find an exact match, but all these, these are, are close and are all possibilities. Right. You can pick from um, you can identify with these people from Guinea-Bissau yeah. and the Kasanga people, or you could identify with people from Mali. I mean, it could be either one that we don't know. Mm -hmm. But we know it has to be one of these tribes because this is where this is the the ones our that ancestors was, yes. came from. Okay. Uh